नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू इंडियन डिप्लोमेसी अ न्यू शो डिजाइन टू ब्रिंग टू यू व्यूअर्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ हाउ इंडिया डील्स विद द वर्ल्ड हाउ इंडिया बिल्ड्स पार्टनरशिप्स हाउ इट रिलेट्स टू अदर कंट्रीज नॉट ओनली फॉर म्यूचुअल बेनिफिट बट फॉर रीजनल एंड ग्लोबल सिक्योरिटी एंड प्रॉस्पेरिटी दिस इज अ शो अबाउट इंडियाज रोल इन द वर्ल्ड वन कंट्री बाई एपिसोड वी आर गोइंग टू डाइसेक्ट india's bilateral ties with a variety of countries small big near and far uh, and in the process get you to understand what india's vision is what india wants to uh, accomplish in the world and how it is a responsible stakeholder in the international order how it is a rising power with responsibility and in the very first episode of indian diplomacy we are looking at a country that's very dear to india's hearts right next door a very crucial partner more than any other strategic partner deeper than any other strategic partnership as our foreign secretary says this is bangladesh india bangladesh relations transcend almost all uh, you know uh, language or any kind of words that you can put to explain the significance of this very very um, central to our diplomacy and the reason being geography history and also contemporary dynamic diplomacy so we're going to be looking at india bangladesh relations in entirety uh, all its uh, aspects and uh, explain to you why it's so important and joining me on this journey is a very special and distinguished guest uh, ambassador pinak ranjan chakravarti ambassador pinak ranjan chakravarti served as india's high commissioner to bangladesh and before that was also deputy high commissioner to bangladesh nobody better than him to help us understand the importance and the extreme strategic and other uh, value of uh, india bangladesh relations so thank you ambassador thank you so much for joining us on indian diplomacy in its maiden episode thank you and uh, ambassador when we yeah. talk of bangladesh and india uh, it is the pillar of our um, neighborhood first foreign policy of prime minister narendra modi pillar of uh, act east policy and uh, in many ways like the crown jewel of uh, india's role in its neighborhood and there's no better example than bangladesh and the way the strategic relations have uh, you know risen to a higher level it's unprecedented and um, we would like uh, you to please uh, start by talking about the historical value of this relationship because when we say india bangladesh you know you go back to millennia i mean the people of bengal undivided bengal were the same people you are bengali yourself and uh, you know uh, and then coming to the 20th century you have some major figures of um, history of both sides who have been you know inspired by each other kazi nazrul islam the national poet of bangladesh took inspiration from rabindranath tagore um, sheikh mujibur rahman the uh, founder of uh, independent bangladesh was heavily inspired by india's freedom struggle mahatma gandhi and all that so um, we like you to reflect please on this historical basis which make this such a special and one of its kind relationship ambassador well indeed it is a civilizational connect across the template of civilization call it language cuisine uh, culture everything um, the, only the religious part was what uh, brought about partition but even before partition i think many of your viewers would like to probably know that a united bengal in a confederacy with india was also mooted by not just uh, you know Uh, the leaders outside bengal but i think m- many of the bengali leaders of that time mooted it but of course it didn't happen and in fact there is a very 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 interesting episode of a letter being written by these leaders to to pandit jawaharlal nehru who said that he had no objection to a united bengal provided it remained within the union of india so that was the end of it in that sense anyway partition happened and then uh, East Pakistan uh, became a reality but even then people noted that East Pakistan was separated from West Pakistan by over 200 kilo- 2000 kilometers of Indian territory it was a bizarre construct of a nation in that sense the two wings are separated by such a long distance and even then it was speculated whether this East Pakistan will ever remain uh, with uh, with West Pakistan there was speculation even at that time Anyway then there was this journey of East Pakistan and then the East Pakistani people suddenly realized that although they were in a majority in the country almost uh, 56% uh, 
yet everything went to west pakistan the funding the major the capital was there the the army bureaucracy was dominated by the west pakistanis and the east pakistanis or the bengalis did not get much chance in the in the upper echelons second of second class citizens they became basically they soon became and felt like second class citizens and it happened very early by 1948 when when jinnah wanted to impose urdu on the bengali population there was almost a revolt that why urdu why not bengali because bengali is our language so it was rooted in bengali nationalism so that was the seeds of those uh, And, and India's intervention, support for the liberation struggle, of course, is etched in everyone's memory. 1971 war, and that's how uh, Bangladesh came about. And uh, 50 years uh, have passed uh, since that uh, seminal moment. And India sacrificed soldiers; thousands uh, of uh, Indian Army soldiers laid down their lives for the liberation of Bangladesh. And uh, Bangladesh remains so grateful. for that and of course uh, the uh, guerrillas from uh, what was then called the mukti wahini uh, were trained by india and supported by india so it was actually uh, in many ways an umbilical link that was broken in 1947 but was restored in 1971 in the form of the creation of bangladesh but it's not all history and uh, viewers although the basis of india bangladesh relation rests on a uh, glorious shared past and uh, heritage there's much more contemporary dynamism to this relationship and to learn more about the dynamism of the contemporary relationship let's listen in to what the indian high commissioner in dhaka has to say about the ongoing cooperation thank you very much for the opportunity to be part of this important program on india's foreign policy and thank you of course for beginning with bangladesh in future i would say uh, the india bangladesh relationship is crucial for both bangladesh and india's national aspirations if the relationship and its promise is correctly implemented at least in uh, or correctly realized at least in substantial measure it has the prospect of transforming the way the subcontinent functions in terms of trade in terms of logistics in terms of connectivity but also in terms of the way in which the people of south asia relate to each other so the india bangladesh relationship is carries with it the potential for being an exemplar for the totality of our region that i think would make it a particularly special moment if the india bangladesh relationship succeeds as it is currently doing um i would also say that the success of the relationship has a transformative impact not just in terms of foreign policy or foreign security policy but also in terms of domestic security and domestic stability for both countries essentially a bangladesh india relationship that is peaceful cooperative stable and forward oriented forward looking is a relationship that will contribute to peace and security and stability in the northeast and in eastern india it is a relationship that will also contribute to development as connectivity and the ties of linkage between uh, between india and bangladesh severed in 1947 and 1965 thereafter are reestablished so in other words it will transform the way the entire sub region is is structured if we continue to get the relationship right a third major area of consideration for why this relationship is important is what we intend to do and how we intend to take things forward today bangladesh is already among our top 5 trade partners globally it is one of the most important destinations for indian business and indeed it has the potential for being even more so it is an important destination for indian investment certainly in the automotive and other sectors and in the energy sector it is our largest development partner in the world we provide something like 30% of our development assistance to bangladesh at highly concessional terms uh it is also our largest visa operation as people to people ties have developed rapidly over the last several years so in every sense the relationship between india and bangladesh is of critical importance uh to a number of sectors of our of our own developmental aspirations getting that getting that narrative out is very important as both countries need to invest on in getting beyond stereotypes of each other and through this 
more people to people contact more business contact more uh, movement of young people more cooperation in uh, sunrise sectors of development and business such as startups uh, technology platforms uh, the the uh, the sort of uh, leveraging of the youth capacities of what are fundamentally two very young countries these are the drivers that will take the relationship forward drivers that will take the relationship forward uh, we heard it from the indian high commissioner in bangladesh now he is emphasizing ambassador chakravarty uh, a lot of trade investment and people to people linkages which is of course the nuts and bolts of diplomacy right i mean it's not just the high politics and uh, on that front we are doing very well and um, it's really a role model relationship with the kind of connectivity that's been built i am reminded of uh, mustafizur rahman a uh, well known bangladeshi economist who said that india and bangladesh are just one space with a border to manage between them you know vast market 170 million people bangladesh 1.3 mil- billion people of india if you just combine these you know it becomes such a great opportunity which will raise um, levels of income and standards of living for both sides and uh, indeed we have done a lot of work on logistics that was something that uh, stuck in my mind uh, from what the high commissioner was saying and you've been witness to it you've been helping and shepherding this whole process forward so ambassador this uh, trade and investment and connectivity this is really our core strength which makes this relationship so thick let me begin by saying that i was on the first train from dhaka to kolkata and this was in april uh, 2008 and so that was the beginning actually and then uh, again the electricity grid connection the energy exchange and now we have a pipeline to supply petroleum products oh. so there has been a lot of uh, i think uh, progress in connectivity now we are rebuilding all the trans border nodes that were disrupted in 65 the in border infrastructure the the what we call the integrated check, check. posts these are all being built now and some of them are already functional and this is very important to expedite a lot of effort and i think a lot of wastage takes place because of the time consumed in clearing goods at the border so i think trade facilitation, trade facilitation. is a very very important aspect of it we know that we are we are going to be uh, we are going to trade even more in in the future as the economies expand fifth and the largest uh, exporter i absolutely. mean uh, uh, you know buyer of indian uh, is just quite remarkable right and it's uh, within south asia among all the countries uh, india bangladesh is like the engine and uh, really an example for how we can improve regional you know uh, intra regional trade absolutely and i'll just quote to you one figure that will uh, open the eyes of everybody and that is bangladesh exports 42 billion dollars annually and pakistan exports 26 billion dollars look at the difference where bangladesh was and where bank pakistan is today although these comparisons comparisons are not really uh, you know sometimes say comparisons are odious but this is a comparison that opens your eyes where bangladesh is today and that is why india has such a deep deep interest in furthering these ties apart from the relationships that have grown more through history and civilization and also the geography the eastern region for example if we can reconnect it like it was before partition then i think it will help the people of that country one important factor is that bangladesh has permitted a connective cyber connectivity through a fiber optic cable that runs from uh, from cox's bazar where the international station is the cable under undersea cable sort of terminates to gagartala mm. so that internet connectivity which helps banking which helps everything in the northeastern states can be speeded up in that in that sense regional integration is always a key for a rising power to show its influence and i think india is doing that very admirably with bangladesh and uh, there is this uh, whole gamut of uh, relationships that have sprung up uh, the connectivity we have uh, bus service we have railways we have uh, you know uh, inland waterways and we have uh, settled our maritime border uh, dispute with them for oceanic shipping also now uh, to make it easier so and the ports are now connected prime minister modi has the sagar mala the idea of uh, developing india's coast and connecting with uh, all ends of the indian ocean and bangladesh is very very critical for the eastern side of it and uh, 
clearly the transportation links and all those we have worked a lot and uh, it is an example of how diplomacy is necessary to overcome any hesitations or barriers right uh, ambassador because otherwise you could have neighbors with very less to do with each other you know for example Pakistan and India because of their ideological hostility towards India. But Bangladesh is much more open and uh, does not feel insecure to deal with a big country like India and we have also been uh, you know uh, magnanimous towards Bangladesh in settling our uh, land border disputes and uh, uh, the, the maritime uh, boundary and all these things in which actually India conceded more than it received if you go just do an arithmetic. So, I think th those things the trust has built up uh, especially in the last few years and that is yielding results because there is a push concerted push by the uh, governments of both sides and of course, the people uh, are also benefiting from this whole ex uh, you know the exchanges. One advantage that uh, our policy towards Bangladesh enjoys is a political consensus within, within India that yes, we need good relations with Bangladesh. That consensus was not there in Bangladesh uh, till about a, a decade ago. Ever since uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina took over power or came to power in 2009, she has proved to be um, a very, very determined uh, sort of an actor, political actor in furthering this relationship. And without hesitation and without all those insecurities that you talked about, she has proceeded and set them aside in a manner that has really built so much of confidence in the two countries Sheikh. that Sheikh. it is incredible. Sheikh Hasina really hats off, I mean, what a leader. And, uh, uh, there is a famous anecdote of Prime Minister Modi meeting Sheikh Hasina on the sidelines of UN General Assembly in 2014 and saying aap mujh pa bharosa rakhye, which means just have trust in me and on the basis they worked out the land boundary agreement to mutual satisfaction. <coughs> what an extraordinary act of uh, you know high level diplomacy. Talking of which we would like you to see what the leaderships of the two countries, the President of India, the Prime Minister of India and of course, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh have to say about how the relationship is evolving with an eye to the future. Let us listen in. If the first 50 years of our partnership began by surmounting extraordinary challenges that forced a deep friendship between our people, perhaps the time has come to raise the bar even higher. To achieve that, our businesses, our academics and especially our youth must be motivated to jointly create globally pioneering initiatives in the world of ideas, creativity, commerce and technology. Our innovators should be urged to find new solutions based on locally appropriate technologies to address our common development challenges. We must urge our thinkers to leverage the power of our own unique success stories to find best in class ideas that are relevant in our regional context. Together we can create opportunities for seamless flow of ideas and innovation as we enter a new era of interconnectivity. We have all हमारी विरासत भी साझी है, हमारा विकास भी साझा है, हमारे लक्ष्य भी साझे हैं, हमारी चुनौतियां भी साझी हैं। हमें याद रखना है कि व्यापार और उद्योग में जहां हमारे लिए एक जैसी संभावनाएं हैं, तो आतंकवाद जैसे समान खतरे भी हैं, जो सोच और शक्तियां इस प्रकार की अमानवीय घटनाओं को अंजाम देती हैं, वो अब भी सक्रिय हैं। हमें उनसे सावधान भी रहना चाहिए और उनसे मुकाबला करने के लिए संगठित भी रहना होगा। हम दोनों ही देशों के पास लोकतंत्र की ताकत है, आगे बढ़ने का स्पष्ट विजन है। भारत और बांग्लादेश एक साथ मिलकर आगे बढ़े इस पूरे क्षेत्र के विकास के लिए उतना ही जरूरी है और इसलिए आज भारत और बांग्लादेश दोनों ही देशों की सरकारें 
इस संवेदनशीलता को समझकर इस दिशा में सार्थक प्रयास कर रहे हैं हमने दिखा दिया है कि आपसी विश्वास और सहयोग से हर एक समाधान हो सकता है हमारा लैंड बाउंड्री एग्रीमेंट भी इसी का गवाह है कोरोना के इस कालखंड में भी दोनों देशों के बीच बेहतरीन तालमेल रहा है हमने सार कोविड फंड की स्थापना में सहयोग किया अपने ह्यूमन रिसोर्स की ट्रेनिंग में सहयोग किया भारत को इस बात की बहुत खुशी है कि मेड इन इंडिया वैक्सीन बांग्लादेश के हमारे बहनों और भाइयों के काम आ रही है The opening of Feni Breeze is a testimony to the Bangladesh government's continued commitment to support our neighbor India in strengthening connectivity in the region particularly for the north east of India. In 2010 the then chief minister of Tripura placed a proposal before me to build a bridge over the river feni he pointed out that the bridge is very important to the business community of india's north east region for using the chattogram sea port we considered the request positively since then the government of bangladesh has extended all necessary support to the indian side for construction of the bridge 10 years later today the bridge is a reality this bridge will be a trading lifeline for the north east of india as you all know bangladesh has already allowed the use of chattogram and mongla ports for the movement of goods to and from india Now with the opening of the Feni Bridge movement of goods between West Bengal and the landlocked Indian North Eastern states can take place through Bangladesh earlier the nearest seaport for Agartala was Kolkata which is over 1600 kilometers away here is today Agartala's nearest seaport is Chattogram and the distance through bangladesh is less than 100 kilometers that's how we are bridging the gap that's how we are reducing you know the distances even further it's a remarkable journey and uh, you see how the leaderships of both sides are talking about pragmatic cooperation that will bring about a transformation not just for the two countries but for the whole region because this has uh, uh, linkages to the rest of uh, the southeast asia which uh, takes off from the eastern part of bangladesh and uh, the more you think about this whole region as uh, one you know limitless landmass then you can see the potential coming ambassador chakravarty prime minister also mentioned apart from the connectivity an important issue which is always important for security in this region the threat of jihadist extremism and uh, fundamentalism and terrorism and the governments of bangladesh and india have been cooperating on a variety of fronts intelligence uh, sharing you know security and all these to keep a tab and to control this menace so even for security and from a geopolitical angle uh, the pakistani factor always tries to play spoil sport in bangladesh and there is that element so how do you think going forward uh, you know your thoughts on how we can also secure ourselves better through uh, closer defense and and other forms of cooperation well one thing one has to say that there has be, there has been a rise of uh, islamist uh, groups in bangladesh and they did cause a lot of damage uh, you know killing innocent people etc uh, because they thought that you know some blogger was killed and there were some foreigners yeah, also yeah. were killed then there were sort of bomb blasts and other killings but i think prime minister hasina understood very well that these forces need to be curbed and i think she she cracked down very heavily on these forces and today i think they are more or less eliminated but then let us not underestimate the other islamist factors who may not be armed but who can also be violent yes and we saw that recently during 
uh, you know, the last uh, Durga Puja. There have been in, some uh, unfortunate there, there were unfortunately some communal disturbances, and uh, so these these people are are very much there and active. They get international support, and one of the major one of their major supporters has been Pakistan, which is not very happy with the fact that Bangladesh is so friendly to India exactly. because for Pakistan it has been ideology only. Ideology has trumped pragmatism. And religious hatred. So, India-Bangladesh cooperation really is transcending these factors. You know, language and culture are far thicker than religion and that's what we are proving uh, through this special relationship. There's also the China factor. The China wants to play a bigger role uh, in Bangladesh. But uh, Sheikh Hasina has been a very strong advocate for the strategic partnership mm -hmm. with India. So, it's quite clear that uh, this is a kind of a relationship we would like to replicate across uh, the broader South Asian, our extended neighborhood. And uh, all the elements are there. It's been going well. And we will hope that this uh, gathers team and continues to progress. Ambassador Pinak Chakravarti, thank you so much, sir, for your time. Uh, we are out of uh, time to continue this. But uh, viewers, the point is India, as a bigger country, is handling sensitively a smaller nation, relatively smaller nation uh, like Bangladesh uh, to mutual benefit. It's a win-win cooperation model. We have not um, uh, really failed the expectations of Bangladeshis. Bangladeshi people as a whole love India and the relationship continues to go, uh, climb higher uh, peaks. And I think the sky is the limit uh, in terms of trade, in terms of connectivity, in terms of people to people, and yes, in terms of cracking down on terrorism. So on all these fronts, this is a multifaceted relationship and uh, a role model for uh, Indian diplomacy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again uh, with another country uh, next time when we have uh, Indian diplomacy back on air. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Ambassador, for being here. Thank you very much.